Boom! Kenji, what's <laughs> yes. up, brother? Dude, I am so How fired How we doing, dude? I'm fired up. <laughs> I'm so fired up. Here, I'm setting the stage very quickly. I need to get to this. Okay. Everybody knows I'm pulling the curtain back a little bit. Fun Bag Friday, we usually do it, like, and then just shoot it out on Fridays. We're recording this on Thursday night. Prime time. It's about eight PM, almost eight PM in most parts yeah, of the just country. Got back. I just flew. I just flew yeah. Explain. Right explain your situation today, because this is going to step into this whole conversation we're going to have. Well, so. I worked. This, I worked. Uh, I worked at the network this morning. I did MLB Central. Then I just and flight was delayed. I just flew home back in Pittsburgh. Now, literally, we talked on the phone. I said, "When do you want to do okay. flight back?" Fire? Like, let's do it right now. So yes. I said, "I walked in the house. Boom." You asked me if I'd seen any baseball today. I said, "No." I know. Okay, and that's a I, that's God's honest truth on Sean's kids, on my family, on all yes. her family. Yes. Strike us down. This is a fact. So what we were blessed with today, and also you look great in your tank top, bro. No, I'm, I'm, it's like no. I'm trying to go you're inner inner Pat McAfee. <laughs> no, that's what I said. <laughs> I'm so fired up right now. I'm channeling my inner Pat McAfee because I'm I'm trying to be like him with this one because this is a big one to me in the sport of baseball. We were lucky enough for us to record tonight. To have a day game go on today between two teams, the Los Angeles Dodgers interleague against the Chicago White Sox. Now, by the way, what I just what I'm about to tell you, I texted our good friend Jim Tomey earlier, and I was like, "What is your take?" And he hasn't gotten back to me yet, and I think I'll keep it personal if he ever does. But here's the deal, okay? I'm just gonna set the stage for you, Sean. You know nothing about this, right? This is like a magic trick. Nothing. Okay. <clears throat> Dodgers. I'm going to, it's fourth inning ends. White Sox have just scored three runs in the bottom of the fourth, Sean, okay, to make it a okay. four nothing game. It is now the top of the fifth inning, and I'm just going to read through, I'm just going to go straight through MLB.com's play by play, okay? okay? Are you ready for this? Are you well, nervous? It's bottom five. We're in Chicago. No, we're going, we're going. No, we're in Chicago. They just scored three runs. I'm sorry. It's now the top of the fifth. The Dodgers are coming to bat down 4 nothing. Okay. Okay. Sousa replaces Matt Foster. Gavin Lux singles on a ground ball to first baseman Andrew Wright. All right, fine. Andrew Vaughn. Okay. So there's a runner on first, no out. Austin Barnes then flies out to right fielder Adam Engel. So there's one out, runner on first, 4 nothing. Top fifth, <clears throat> Dodgers trailing. Mookie Betts, Mookie Betts grounds out. Okay? So now we have... Two outs. Two outs. Freddie Freeman singles on a line drive to left, which he often does. So now we have two on. It's runners on first and second with two outs. Okay? Okay. There you go. Now, this is when things get crazy. Trey Turner comes up. Strike one, slider, about 89. Strike two, 0 02, slider, about 89. Third pitch is a ball, but it's a wild pitch. Slider, I'm going to tell you that right now. Get your mental baseball, I'm hitting <clears throat> right now. Okay, fine. Slider, away, ball one. So it's one, two count, runners advance, second and third, one, two, two outs. Up four, nothing, top fifth. Tony LaRusa then intentionally walked Trey Turner on a one-two count, Sean. I'm going to stop right there and get your take right now before we keep going. Overthinking it. Like, I trying to, like, for me, that's like, I mean, Tony's a great manager, obviously one of the best ever, but, like, that's overthinking it. You know what I mean? Like, come on. Like, one-two, you got a big league pitcher on the mound, you're in the mid, you're in the fifth inning, you know, and they're, they're, if the White Sox are winning or losing, the White Sox are winning for nothing. You have just loaded the bases to put so the you're, tying you're, you're run you're bringing, up. So you, even if it's a three-run homer, it's still 4-3. So you're bringing up the tying run okay. and walking out to it. I think it's a, I, I personally think it's a, not a dumb, smart thing. Okay, to do. next move, I'm going to give you the second iteration of this. The guy who was on deck is Matt Muncy. Now, he's struggled a lot this year, but listen— Three-time All-Star, three times top yeah. 50 MVP. Max Muggsy can get into one, yeah. So I, I'm watching this, and I'm like, you know, maybe if a rookie comes up who's 22, 23 years old, who's like, oh, you're going to intimidate me, 
and then he starts swinging out of his ass, right? But this is Matt Muncy, uh, right, right-handed pitcher on the mound. No, we're going to be lefty, lefty now. So let's okay. give Larusa that if you want. You know what Muncy did? He hit a grand slam. Mac Muncy homers on a fly ball to left center field. Freddie Freeman and Trey Turner score. Oh, I'm sorry, one run scored on the other one. So it was it, it was. Oh, I'm sorry, it was two runs on, two runners on by that point. But the run had scored, so it was a it was four to one right. by that point. Either way, right. I just think it's ridiculous. Like who? That's Tony La Russa, dude. Am I crazy? It's just, you know what? It's not crazy for me, bro. I played against La Russa for eight years in the same division. I think he was the first guy to do the shift. I mean, he, you know, listen, right. one thing about Tony La Russa, he's, everything he does is calculated. You know, everything he does, he's, and the, the one thing I do love about Tony is he goes on gut feels. You know, a lot of guys, a lot of these managers nowadays are just, here you go, this is what you do, these are the numbers, this is what they say. Pitch this guy, put this guy in, you know, all, just throw this guy this pitch. You know, I'm not a huge fan of what he did, but, you know, it's like, it's like Tony Roos is one of the best ever to play the game. There's a, he was the first guy to put the pitcher eight and the, you know yeah, what I mean? Back to pitcher eight and the next guy, nine, and was like, what the heck is he doing? And I like, know. now tons of teams do it or did, used to do it before there was a double D, the, you know, the universal DH. So, you know what? I think it was not a smart idea. It totally backfired on him, but, you know, but what what would go into your head? Let's just say you're the manager. Like, okay, yo, no, uh, let's do this. Sean Casey, three hundred career hitter. If you're one two, you're still not you're not Sean Casey career three hundred hitter when you're one two with three sliders, first two strikes and one ball. Am I wrong or am well, I overthinking you, this? He's getting crushed, well, crushed on the internet right now, like crushed. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure he is. And and one thing he's, he is not probably doesn't even know how to get on the internet. So he probably doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the first thing. Um, I'm looking it up right now because obviously I think a big reason was was that uh, to load the bases. To Trey Tur- well, well Trey, Trey Turner's hitting 300. Yeah, again, Max everybody Muncy's at home. Hitting. I just threw this at Sean just now, so we are, we are live. And I, I knew Max point. Muncy was struggling. Max Muncy coming to this game was hitting 150. Or, yeah, you know, so he's he's an out. So if you're playing the percentages, Trey Turner has twice the chance to get a hit as Max Muncy does right now. You right. know Max Muncy's going to get it going. But, you know, that situation. Also, too, there's a lot of pride in this game, too. I remember when when they would when they would intentionally or mm. intentionally walk guys ahead of me, I don't care if I was struggling or not at that point of the season, I'd be like, let's get it on. Like, this but, is embarrassing. Okay, but now Are you going to walk that guy? Do like, you overthink it and overswing? Or do you sit back? Like, no, no, you, no, no you, would just comp- you would just really compete. Yeah, that's my argument for why you don't do that to a Max Muncy. You can do that to a 24-year-old. But, like, Muncy's like, <sighs> like you always say, take the deep breath. Yeah. He took the deep <laughs> yeah. breath. I saw him take the deep breath and go, yeah, all right, yeah. now it's on. You know? Now he's ready to go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, you know what? It, it, it backfired on him, but... Uh, I, you know what? With La Russa, Chinch, I'm not kidding you, bro. I've seen so many him do so many different things that I think he's he's innovated the game sometimes with, you know, I, he was the first guy to do the shift on me. I was like 2005. I'm wow. like, why does Tony have Scott rolling at short <laughs> and and three other dudes on the right side? Seriously. Yeah. And I would beat him sometimes because I would hit a ground ball to where Roland was. I'm like, Uh-oh. take that. I was like pissed. How I'm great like, is that? Dude. You know what I mean? So, like, dude, I, he's I, – I, I'm not surprised. Was it a good move? One, two count, no. Sean, have you ever seen that in your life? That's why I'm – I guess – I don't know no, if I'm ever seeing this. So I'm just seeing everything on the internet, and it's getting me fired I, up the way this I, country I've gets. never seen that before, but I'm not surprised. One, by two, Sean. One, two count. One, two count. If I you're know. in that game and you're playing first base, what – It's oh. overthinking it, man. It's overthinking it. And, and obviously, like I said – now you're also messing with people's emotions too. Yeah. One, two, you just intentionally, Max Muncy's a, one of the best, better players in the league the last few years. Yeah. Maybe you just got Max Muncy hot. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> no. Maybe yeah, you just, you just woke well, the giant. You know what I mean? I'm not going to, I'm not going to say out loud when Muncy crossed home plate, you know how they do it now. Everybody's got the cameras and they zoomed in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he dropped a couple of F bombs. On La Russa, like one, two, you're gonna walk him, mother. Beep, boop, 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 pop, beep, beep. Dude, dude, dude. Yeah. I, w- I would have done this. I would have done the yeah. same thing, dude. Like I said, it's a little, 
it's a little in your face when you get someone gets attention walked for you it's a little uh, f you you know what i mean there's a little yeah. bit of like hey dude this guy stinks we're gonna walk the guy with two strikes and I'm telling you, yeah. for, for a guy like Muncie, forget he's hitting 150. Throw that out the window. Yeah. He's pissed. Yeah. He's pissed. And he's and he made LaRusa pay. Right. But he's nice bat. You said he homered left center, right? Yeah. That means he stayed on the lefty uh, stand. Yeah, you maybe did Jones. get him hot just now, huh? Got him Seriously, super hot. Dude, I'm not kidding. Because what dude. is that? It's a concentration thing. He had to concentrate on some. He's probably concentrating on, oh my God, this is a good baseball uh, hitting conversation, right? Like, <laughs> Normally, like, oh my god, I keep pulling out. I keep pulling out. I got to concentrate on folk on staying in, or you know, I'm, I'm flailing on this. When you get emotion involved in it, and you stop actually thinking about your mechanics, you're probably more dangerous as a hitter, right? I think so, dude. When you can dumb it down and just be like, compete. Like, <laughs> yeah. seriously, sometimes you're like, just go beat that guy. Don't think right. about your swing and all this stuff. Just go beat that guy. And you know what's funny is, I remember back for me, like. Whenever I would sh start struggling against righties, yeah. I would hope they brought in a lefty because it would help me keep my front mm. shoulder in if I was relaxed, and I would try to go the other way. It would get me locked in. Like For a guy like Max Muncy, he ended up going two for five in the game. He was probably like, thank you so much because <laughs> yeah. maybe a little fire under my ass to get things going because that's embarrassing. You're going to walk a guy with two strikes. And then also I drove one to left center mm. off a lefty. Man, maybe that gets Max Muncy going, and 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 Dave Roberts and those guys are like, man, I'm just so glad Larusa likes to roll the dice and be innovative and make shit up sometimes. I you love know? it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Again, no. Thank you for doing this. I, I put it from a production standpoint. I really, I really put Casey on the spot just now, but I, I reiterate that like first time he's heard about this this entire time, and I'm still kind of, and we're still gathering evidence. So that by the time you guys hear this, who knows what 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 Tony has said about it? But and then the Dodgers won the game, right? Yes. Big win for them. Dodgers. Yep. Dodgers, Dodgers won, won the game 11 11 9. Wow. wow. Crazy. Unbelievable. Oopsies. Am I cra Did I overstate that? Am I not crazy that I I've never seen that before in a baseball game? <laughs> no, I don't know if I've ever seen that either, dude. I don't know. If and especially at that time of the game, fifth inning. Maybe, you know, we're all talking about, hey, they walked Seeger, Jim Madden did. They, mm -hmm. We walked uh, Bonds, you know, when Buck Shower walked Bonds right. with the base loaded. But that was like Barry Bonds, 8 6 game. Yeah. A hit. Bring, ties it, you know. So right, he, and, and hey, Trey Turner, all star, superstar, great player, five tool right. type player, but not the guy that's going to hit the home run to blow it, right? Like right. you're not, especially one two count on on Trey Turner. You're you're worried more about a single than you are at a homer because he's yeah. that much of a a hitter like yeah. you were, where you would concentrate. All right. I got a question for you, bro. Okay, that's what fine. do you think of the Phillies? I mean, they they fire they fire our buddy Joe Girardi. Yeah. Next thing you know, they've won seven in a row, seven right? Seven in a row. Hey, talk to me. I know a lot of our friends um, kind of know the guy who took over as manager there. You want to talk a little bit about him? And and again, this is no offense to Joe Girardi. Like, shoot, I love that man. I think he's a hell of a manager. He's one of the best best managers of our generation. He's the Yankees manager yeah. for a decade. Yeah. But. I don't know. Do you think that switch really it can trigger everybody to just feel better and hit better? Or well, is you need a well, change. You played, so you well, know better than me. It's a shot of adrenaline. Whenever, and whenever your manager gets fired in the middle of the year, it's a shot of adrenaline to you to the team. Like we got to get our shit together. Like we got to look at mm. we got to take some accountability. I think when your manager gets fired, there's a little bit of guys getting together and go. We got to start taking accountability for right. all for ourselves too because. The reason the manager gets fired is because yeah, you feel a little blame collected. for it. You feel a yeah, little blame yeah, for it. Heck yeah! Has that happened to you? Heck yeah! That's happened to you. Uh, yeah, yeah, it did happen to us. Uh, Bob Boone got fired. I got happened to me a couple times. Bob Boone, I believe, got fired in two thousand three, and Dave Miley the next year got fired in two thousand and four in the middle of the year, like towards the end of the year, I think. And, uh, yeah, you take responsibility, man, because you're with those guys at spring training for, you know, you've been with Joe for a couple of years. And all of a sudden you come in one day and it's like, hey, uh, Joe got fired. And you're mm -hmm. like, what? I remember coming in when Bob Boone got fired. And I think Jim Bowden got fired, too. So the GM, oh, wow. I was there when the GM and, and so it was weird because yeah. Bowden was the guy that traded for me. He was the guy running the club. Boone was our manager the whole year. And all of a sudden, they're both gone. It's an eerie feeling, man. Yeah. It's an eerie feeling because you're like, oh, man, who's gonna, who's driving the bus? Right. You know what I mean? Like, what the right. hell is going on here? So it's like you almost are forced to get together as a team because you're grown men. 
Yeah. And you're yeah. like, let's go, boys. Like, you got to be shitting me the way we're playing. We're not pitching well. We can't freaking lock a game down. So we can't save a game. We can't hit runners in scoring position. We have only a few guys that are hitting hitting the ball. Bryce Harper's kind of the only guy mm-hmm. at, at, at the, you know, really pulling his weight yeah, in that lineup at times. Yeah. You know, so I think it's like now Schwarber got four hits yesterday. Maybe yeah. he's going. He's getting hot. He's you know, you're, hot. yeah, you're starting to see some of these guys, you know, get going. And like, you know, Stott's going to probably play a little bit more. Moniac's back. You know, um, Gregorius is back. He's hitting over 300. Real Muto, Castellanos, those guys got to get going. So I don't know, you know, Reese Hoskins, you know, for me as a player, it's one of those things where you like, you know, like Mike Trout said the other day when Madden got fired, like, we got to take accountability. Like right. we got to kind of look at ourselves in the mirror and say, are we doing everything that we can, you know, to go out there and win ball games? You know, are we, and are we putting the extra work in, in the cages? You know, are guys doing, because here's the thing about baseball change. It's the ultimate individual team sport. Yeah. No one is. can, no one can pick for you. Hey man, I'll set a pick for you to so you can get open and shoot a three. Hey, you're the pulling guards, not going to come out, open up a hole for you. So the running back can hit it. Right. I mean, like all that stuff, like, you're in the box. That guy's on the mound. You're out in the field by yourself. You know what I mean? Like, you really got to get your shit together as far as, like, are you putting the work in, in the cages? Are you putting the work in mentally? Are you ready to go, you know, pitch by pitch? Are you ready defensively? Are you ready on the bump? You know, do you, do you have your pitches down? Are you really doing what you need to do between starts? Are you really doing what you need to do in the bullpen? Like, there's so much that goes into it. And when a manager gets fired because you suck, you're like, I got to look at myself in the mirror and go, am I right. doing what I need to be doing every day to, to help this team win? Obviously not, if that's happening. I love that. Now, we're going to get hardcore into the <laughs> Angels in a minute, but from what you just said, everything you just said, like the accountability uh, and are we doing this? Are we doing that? Are we doing this? Are we doing that? I, I don't know if there's been any manager in the last, and I almost to a fault, and I think actually the reason he lost his job with the Yankees was Girardi was almost to a fault so locked in on all the things you just mentioned so when do you say like I, you know there's always a scapegoat there's a scapegoat in everything you do in any right. business anything right. you do right. anything you do in your life i feel like all those things you just mentioned that are like <laughs> the boxes you got to check as a professional athlete professional baseball player i feel like he would have been doing that now and again, we're not going to get inside the clubhouse, but what? Uh, let me take you back to like your experiences and what what is that transition? Why? I know Joe Girardi did all those things with those check boxes, but it wasn't working. And now, like you said, they're all on fire. What is that? Can you even can you put anything tangible to that, or it's just the way it is? It's a it's a full year and. It's just like looking at the blue flowers instead of looking at the red flowers one day. Ah, you know what, Chinch? If I had that answer, I, I, <laughs> I, would, I would tell you. I, I don't know. Although I do know this. <clears throat> a bad manager Dusty- can be a bad manager, right? Like that could really toxic make it Listen, toxic. Listen, Jim, Jim Leland said it best one time. He goes, Case, he goes, if I got great players, I'm a great manager. If I got horseshit players, I'm a horseshit manager. And this is what he said. He goes... <laughs> If I got Barry Bonds hitting third for me, I'm a hell of a manager. If I got Billy Bonds hitting third for me, I'm a horseshit manager. <laughs> He's like, if I got Justin Verlander throwing every fifth day on the bump for me, I'm a hell of a manager. If I got Stanley Verlander on the bump for me throwing <laughs> yeah. every fifth day, I'm a horseshit manager. And that's the truth. But yeah. I think the thing about the Phillies and the, and the Angels, they got good players. You know, so the problem with that. I think Joe's one of the best managers in the game. I think Joe Madden is too. I think they're both great managers. Yeah, let's pivot there. Let's start going towards the Angels. Yeah, I think they're both great managers. But like you know, I think I think that's the problem. Change is when the team falters. You can't fire Bryce Harper. Mm -mm. You're not going to fire Castellanos. (laughs) You just signed her Schwarber. Someone's got to take a fall. And I think the big thing in this situation is it was. I think it's it was really the the both owners had a had big says. Mm. In, in in both of these managers. So I think they kind of took the ownership and said, you know what, it's time to move in a different direction. But the Phillies just missed the playoffs last year. Right. You know, and I think with the Angels, I don't know, man. I think the Angels, it's a shame that we're, we're you know, Mike Trout's, you know, in his 30s now. And we might miss Mickey Mantle. You know, Mickey mm. Mantle's not Mickey Mantle if he's not <laughs> playing for the Yankees. It's true. It's true. You know, so it's like, it's such a shame, like, 
I, I just want to see all pitchers get together in the offseason and say, let's go play for the Angels just to make sure we get, <laughs> make sure we get Trout in the postseason. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. <clears throat> well, you got Darv's 14 games. What was your longest l- losing streak? Uh, I can't remember. Something like that when I was with the Reds. Pretty like bad. Been, Back in the Reds. Yeah, days. you're like, dude, it's, t- it's crazy when you start losing games like that because it's tough to win three in a row. It's also tough to lose three in a row. Mm. So Do you start lose, getting selfish? Do you start going, screw it? Well, at least I, I got to go two for four. I don't care. This team sucks. Or no, do you, no, no. You No, dude. You, some people do, wanna, maybe. No. Maybe. Some you guys. Go, you almost go the other way. You're like, I'll do whatever it takes to get a W. Mm. I'll do it because it's embarrassing, dude. Yeah. I'll do whatever it takes to get a W. Like, it's, it's embarrassing to lose that many games in a row. And those guys are professionals, they're prideful guys, and they're 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 dying to get a win. And they should have yeah. got a couple in uh, out there in Philly, but yeah. Philly found a way to win. <laughs> yeah, they did. So, <laughs> but here, let's let's take a little step back. Philly, right now as we're speaking, two and a half games out of a wild card spot. The Angels with 14 straight losses, right? Yeah, they're still in it. Three and a half out. And what are we on? Right. June 8th and 9th, beginning of June. You played this game for a long time. Anything can happen, yeah. right? There's a hundred games to go, dude. There's a hundred and plus games to go. hundred and six games or whatever right. it is. I mean, bro, right. that's why it's a marathon, not a sprint. That's why <clears throat> even for me, like seeing Madden and, and Girardi get fired, I'm like, ah, did you fire the wrong guys? You mm, know? That's the is thing. That a, yeah, they know what they're doing, right? That's a great point. Great point. Because here, let me ask you this too. I, I try to look at statistics this way just of looking at the season and all the years I've been working in. So I'm just picking a team, random. Okay, Baltimore, 24 and 33, okay? I, I'm i not looking at it on paper, and I'm just popping this into my head right now. I guarantee there is a stretch in at least 65% to maybe 80% of the teams that goes to, through a stretch where they're 24 and 33, because if you're up nine ga- you're up nine games in the standings, oh, all of a sudden we're up five. Nobody talks about the fact that you're only 24 and 33 in those, those last, what, 57 totally. games. Fast math. Um, right? Yeah. It gets so, magnified. It gets so magnified. It's such Dude, a what tough about, what about a few? What about the few years ago? Was that 2019 when the Nationals won it? Yes. Dave Martinez. Dude, they right. were like, they were, they were five point. games under. They were going to fire Dave Martinez. Next thing you know, they make a run. They get healthy. They start doing well, pitching well, hitting well. They win the World Series. Dave Martinez gets a three-year extension. Yes. Like, yes. it's totally what have you done for me lately. It's like, right. you got to be kidding me. Yeah, and then what happens on the flip side? Like, Dave Martinez could get fired in 10 minutes right now. Like, he could be fired. He could be the next guy. Like, like. Right. Oh, exactly. It's such a tough sport. I just that's where the thing from the beginning, like walking a guy with a one two count in June, it just doesn't make sense to me because again okay, how about that pitcher? Okay, you say this all the time, like I'm up at bat, like don't take my at bats away. This is how I feed my family. I'm feeding my family by hitting right now. You're feeding your family by getting to a one and two count if you're a pitcher. I agree that you you, 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 know, right? you always say a pitcher has earned a one and two count. Right. As a pitcher, and if I'm a hitter, I earn the two oh three one counts. They don't just come. I have to I have to do a lot of things yeah. right to get the two oh three one. That pitcher's got to do a lot of things right to get the one two. Yeah. And the hitter, listen, there's always a little more defensiveness as a hitter at one and two, especially right. a guy like Trey Turner. Doesn't strike out a lot, runs fast, probably trying to put the ball in play. I'd be shocked if he's hitting a three run homer right there. Mm-hmm. So like Right. What right. is that? So the pitcher, when you go take that guy out, you're like the pitcher's like, what the hell? Right. Like I just got this guy one two. Let, I'm a big league pitcher. Let me finish him off. Right. I guarantee. So you're a career three oh two hitter. I guarantee, with a one and two count, you're less than a three oh two hitter. I could be crazy. No, but you got to guess. Just that, right? go look at the league. Go look at the league average with two strikes. Right. It's got to be. You're probably a, you're a one. You're a one thirty hitter. Yeah, unbelievable. That's a crazy. That's why yeah, that you're worse so than Max Muncy right there. He's a 140 hitter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Who can hit a three run home run every but, 14 at yeah. bats? And, <clears throat> and the, yeah, and the thing about Max Muncy is like, back of the baseball card doesn't lie, dude. He's off to a terrific start. No. That doesn't mean he's going to stay there. No. Yeah. So by the time you guys uh, check this out in the morning, you might we might get. I'm telling you, I, maybe I'm overthinking this, and we'll know. It's cool that we're doing this tonight because. I don't think this is going away. I think this thing is going to get a lot of the old school people 
to be fired up at the analytics people and oh is Tony La Russa making that decision was the GM making that decision I would argue it's Tony La Russa makes his own decisions he doesn't listen to anybody else right no, nah, no, nah, Tony Russo is making his own decisions, yeah. 100%. All right, well, so we'll see how big this gets and whatever. And by the way, the White Sox right now, what are they in the, uh, in the standings? There's a lot of good stuff happening, dude. I'm going down what the What else? You want to throw a couple others out there before we go? Just a, well, just a great day. Oh, dude, Corbin Burns punched out eight. Yes. Oh, guess we were who's... doing the over under. We we always have to do the gambling now. It's ridiculous. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. Everything's right? about hey, what's the over under? I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. But I remember the over under was seven and a half, and he got an eight punch outs. Like, <laughs> how do they know these numbers? Like, <laughs> you know, one thing about gambling, bro. No, go I ahead. almost feel like if you want to flush your money down the toilet, gamble. No, yeah. It's like you, so you get you get a little bit of a dopamine rush. And it feels good. And then all of a sudden, you don't have a paycheck. No, exactly. No, the, what, who told me this once? One of the greatest lines I ever heard from anybody. If you don't bet, you can't lose. Exactly. Exactly. But if you don't fun. start, you don't have to. If you, if you don't start, you don't have to stop. <laughs> that's, that's a good point, too. Wait, hold on. Uh, Steven Strasburg's back, by the way. They're not going to make a Oh, that's right. He him. came back. That's right. He came back. How, how, many, how many innings did he go? Uh, let's see. Right now, he just started... Oh wow! Oh, it's just start. Oh, the Marlins are up three nothing. They gave up three in a first, so they must have got him. Yeah, hold on, let me get here. Plays. Jesse, Jesus Sanchez, and uh, he's John got Birdie. five punch outs. Yeah, he's you know, three point one inning, three in the third, three earned runs, five punches. Yeah, that five punches is a good sign, dude. That means he's got his stuff. Yeah, he just probably doesn't have location yet. Unbelievable. You, <clears throat> you but how about we were talking about how about Juan Soto, bro? Yes. Guy's hitting two twenty four, which right? Man, you know, he's gonna get hot, there's no doubt about it, but that is for, for Juan Soto, two twenty four. It doesn't the make sense. The only thing is he does have some damage numbers though. He's got twelve bombs, twenty one mm -hmm. ribbies, which isn't really that many ribbies. So that's why an average is called an average, because he could he could <laughs> easily hit four fifty one month. You're like, he's hitting three ten, he's having a hell of a year. Oh my god, yeah. How about the other thing? Here's another one. Mets just Pete Alonso gets hit in a wrist. Every week we come on and talk about this Friday show, and there's another horrific Mets injury. Injury, and they keep. He's okay. He's okay though, right? They, yeah, he'll, said, be, he'll be okay. He, um, yeah, it said it kind of hit him in the meat. If you see it, it hit him in the meat of the hand. So yeah, that's a big difference, right? <clears throat> he's gonna be okay. Yeah. And then also Marte went down with like a like slight groin injury yes. too. Right. Well, by the way, Trout so, going back. Trout tweaked his hammy. I think he's gonna be back. Yeah. No, his groin. His groin. His groin. Too, I think. But, Good grief, man. There's so much going on here. Anyway, well, we got a lot out of this so far. Yeah. You got a big, it, what, what, you got any more stuff to talk about before we, before we get rolling into the weekend? Uh, no, Catcher's coming man. up for the uh, uh, Blue Jays, their number one prospect. What's his oh, name? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's right. Was it Munoz or yeah, something? Yeah, yeah. What's his name? That's a cool one. Well, who, by the way, yeah, are still kind of in a hunt, too. Blue oh, Jays and Red Sox are battling. Blue Jays are good, dude. Yeah, and a race. Um, yeah. Do, what about um, what did you think of Jordan Alvarez getting over a hundred mil? I, I like know. that. You like it? No. He's Dude, got, I think he's one of the best hitters in the game. Already, what, what makes him one of the best yeah. hitters in the game, bro? He, go watch. Go watch the games. The guy wear, is just such a complete hitter. Wears out left, center, right, center. <clears throat> Looks a little bit like Big Poppy. He's only twenty four. Yes, very yes. Like you, you, he, he's been. You know, you think he's been there because he's been in the World Series, all this stuff. Like, guy's twenty four years old, bro. Right. Oh, I, I got one last one for you. So about three weeks ago, we talked about how much do you pay Aaron Judge? Yeah. Right now, at this moment, three eleven, twenty two homers, forty five ribbies, forty six runs, nine doubles. What are you paying him now? Are you going ten? Yep. 10 years? Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. I don't think he wanted 10 years. I think he wanted, didn't he want more more, more uh, annual well, money? Annual money. But at this point, what do you do? He's the face of the Yankees. He's well, you know six, what you have to do? seven, you know what you and do? 270 you know what you do? pounds. You eat, crow. you eat crow at the end of the year, and you say, you know what? Congratulations, brother. You did it. Here's seven years you know, 270. Seven years, 265, 260. I love it. That's man. what you do. By the way, you just mentioned Alvarez. His numbers are right behind judges right now. Two, what would it be? 245. If you if you did 35 a year, 35 times seven, five, carry the three, 245. 
<laughs> that was awesome. I did the 245, same thing. 245, bro. 245 he gets. So seven years, 245. I think he'd do it. I think everybody I says do. yes to that. I think he should say yes to that. They should say yes okay, to that. Cash him needs to put his pride aside, bro. Right. And, and, and sign the guy you're supposed to sign because yeah. I think Judge is that guy. Right. And make him the captain of the team. And then there you go. You're getting value from it for some reason. Yeah. Unbelievable. All right. I think we're good for now. We have so the reason again we we taped this the night before is because we have a monster schedule. Sean's going on a road, but then we got two um, unbelievable guests coming on this week. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It's These we next got two Jeff weeks. Morrow coming. Jeff Morrow coming on from the Food Network, which mm-hmm. is going to be awesome. Yeah. And then we got we got Gonzo coming up soon. Luis Gonzalez broke my heart. Broke my and heart I can't wait to ask him pieces. about that 2001 hit he got off Mariano Rivera. Broke my with heart into pieces on a phone with my dad. I was in Bristol, Connecticut in a condo by myself eating Domino's. I got a thin crust, I got a regular, and I got a deep dish because I was so upset. I left my entire family. And I'm in my first week in Bristol, Connecticut working at ESPN. I call my dad. I'm like, this is it. I got to be on the phone with you. And he's like, son, I don't got a good feeling. And I go, why? And he goes, because nobody's perfect. Even Mariano and my dad oh. jinxed it, jinxed it. <laughs> and then there's a Come little. Come on, Mister Jinx. What are you doing? You like jinxed this. it. Yeah. By the way, I got I got to <laughs> take a hit for something all day today when we were trying to text when Sean's getting on flights and trying to organize. I kept <laughs> I kept calling Gonzo Lugo, and you're like, "Who's yeah, you're Lugo? Like, like, like Julio yeah, Lugo? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, you're like line, line up Lugo. I'm like, <laughs> you mean the pitcher for the Mets? I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm so confused. I'm so embarrassed with myself. <laughs> After a while, you're like, dude, he's Gonzo. He's not Lugo. <laughs> anyway, so well, good. I'll apologize All to right, brother. To All right, what are you man. doing? What are you doing this weekend, Chinch? Just sitting back by the pool. That's why I got my tank top on. I'm not going to take this off for three days. <laughs> Jess just made strombolis. Oh my god! Shout oh, out bro. to Parma Market right down the road. They make salami. I don't know if you... Do you like salami, Sean? <laughs> I love salami, bro. <laughs> I'm going to clip Kidding that off. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude. my It's my favorite. <laughs> it's my favorite deli meat, and they make it homemade, and it is... I, I'm i an Italian person. Maybe I'll ask Jeff Morrow about this. It's the best salami I've ever had in my life, and Jeff just made strombolis with it. I can smell it. We need why. to ask Jeff what makes great salami. Like, yes, What is do. it that makes great... Wait, you know? funny enough, I was going through... His, I got to send you some notes You make on your him. own salami, Chinch? <laughs> No, it depends what you're talking about. <laughs> no, but he you said make your own late night salami. <laughs> no, on Jeff Morrow's bio, it says his favorite yeah. color is pastrami. <laughs> so we got to ask him about that. I laughed really hard when I saw that. When we were doing oh my god, dude! Anyway. Dude, I think see, I think one of the best delis for me. Is Giovanni's in Secaucus? Oh, you ever been there? dude, my man Charlie and Ryan, you fresh me, mots. Well, the Our, three, best fresh mozzarella in the world, in the history of the world. Best fresh mozzarella, dude. The, the, the Giovanni's oh, Italian Deli, the fresh mozzarella they made. It is the best. And you go in there. Dude, I feel like Norman. Dave Valley used like, to, do you know, dude, Dave Valley used to buy the, they used to give him the seeds and he would go take the seeds on a plane yeah. to Seattle and to, make, and his, make his, own his own fresh mozzarella. And make his own mozzarella. Fact. True fact. It's a true fact. That is the best mo- That's There is no mozzarella like that. And they got no. like nine really nice high school kids. They're just constantly <laughs> chopping mozz. It's the greatest thing. If you're ever in New Jersey, go to Giovanni's. And it's in Secaucus, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's in Secaucus. And on Wednesday, go go get the, uh, they get the, they make this homemade roast beef with this gravy. Yes. Oh, oh, the Jew and the oh. yeah. Imagine, I've, I've walked in there before. Just a quick thing before we go. Yeah. There's like a, a an apartment complex next to that. Can you imagine living next to that Giovanni's? I'm telling you, people. Oh, I'd be like three. I'd oh be three seventy with, with. I saw with, some with guy walk out. Heart some, heart failure. Some dude walked out like, and I'm going to say he wasn't in the best shape. <laughs> Sweatpants, and it was like four thirty in the afternoon. I was getting this to have dinner for. It's like four thirty. He just rolled out of that apartment complex, walked in there, walked out with a hero sandwich. This Give me two chefs. And give walk the, back up to give me the six long, give yeah. me the six foot long hero. Yes, yeah, so bro, th- bro, they put so much meat on the subs. It's almost, uh, oh, un- oh, un- oh, you it's, almost it's, can't. No, eat. you got to take some it's, off and just pick at it later. That's a yeah, trick. I believe it's so big, but it's delicious. Yeah, so there you go. Giovanni, shout out Parma Market in Rockville Center. I am telling let's you, let's go, baby. I'm, I'm coming. Let's go. I'm coming. It's beautiful. All right. All right, so let's do All that. Right, I'm going to go crush some food right now. I'm starving. Let's do it. I'm starving, dude. <laughs> About to eat my face off. What? All right, bro. All right.
All right, so we'll see you Tuesday right, with cheers. Jeff Morrow. Love you, brother. Hey, everyone out there, thank you so much for listening to us. Subscribe, download, and share with your friends. Share with your yes. friends. Do change your case a favor and share <laughs> with on. your friends. Let's get it going. Woo. Love you, bro. I'll see you. Love ya. you, buddy.